everyone. Well, tonight we have a, I don't know, we have some tea, some crumpets. You might want to get your drinks and your, your popcorn ready because we have some, um, so much tea that's going to spill. It's not even so much tea. It's so many facts that are going to spill. And it is going to relate to everything that happened in Amber Portwood's house. I have been able to speak with a former employee and I actually am going to have her talk directly with us. Um, she's agreed to appear on the show with me and I am going to um, um, we will we're going to talk about everything that happened in Amber Portwood's house. And she actually found me after um, some of the videos that I had done on Amber and wanted to tell me about what it was like to work for Amber and why um, it's really important that people understand that Amber is not who she says she is. In her own words, Amber is psychotic. So her name is Rhonda Russell. She was recently outed by um, starcasm as the woman that bailed her out in July and she'll tell us about how that all came down but I'm going to welcome her now. Hi Rhonda. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Say hi to everyone. Hi everyone. All right. So we have you. Um, Tell me, like, how did you start? What did you do for Amber? Let's start there. Okay, what didn't I do for Amber? <laughs> um, I started out with, um, actually it was through an app. It was called Tackle. Okay. And it, me and a couple of other gentlemen, we started painting for her. Okay. And it was like towards the, I would say the end of April, beginning of May. And after a few days, she didn't really care for them. So she fired them, but she kept me. Okay. So that's how that kind of started. Once the painting was finished, she kept me on to keep me there to, to cook, to clean, um, to do all the things that she just didn't want to do. Um, laundry, organize things, um, help care for the baby, uh, run errands, take care of the yard. Uh, you name it, I did it. So... That's what I did for her and actually for Andrew too. So, and helped, like I said, help take care of the baby too. How so, long, when did you start working for her? I would say it was probably the middle, like consistently the middle of May. Okay. And then you worked so, there until how long? I worked there all of June, all of July. And then uh, uh, some of August. Okay. But I was there almost every single day. Okay. So how would you describe her as a employer? Uh, I would not. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, probably a negative, negative 95. Whoa. Yeah, she was not very, let me put it to you this way. I'll, I'll tell you a story. Okay. Okay. Um, I was outside one day and I was like checking out their condensing unit. They're out, their air conditioning unit. Yeah. And I noticed that their gas meter kind of planted. Okay. Uh-huh. So I went inside and I told the answer. I said, I think there's something wrong with the gas meter. You know, I think we, should, we need to have it checked out. And he said, okay. So a few hours passed and I, so, but Andrew was always so busy with the baby and also with, with Amber. I mean, she was, kept him in a constant state of uproar, constant. Constant I state mean, of uproar? Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised that guy could find his butt with both hands to tell you the truth. So anyway, back to the gas meter. Okay. A couple hours later, I said, Andrew, have you called about the gas meter? He said, no. I said, okay, I'm going to call and just tell them I'm your aunt and have them come out. So I did that. Yeah. And they came out and the gas meter was, it was leaking at two spots. And it was right next to that 
to the condensing unit, the air conditioner, the air conditioner. Mm-hmm. and it was right below the baby's room. <gasps> so it was just an accident waiting to happen. Yeah. So they, the gas company immediately tagged the meter, turned the gas off at the street, and replaced it right then and there. And Andrew was like, oh my God, Rhonda, you saved our lives. You, you literally saved our lives. And she did not say diddly squat to me. She didn't thank you? No. She didn't even acknowledge it. Wow. And when the, com- when the employees of the gas company came inside to light the appliances, mm-hmm. um, this was one of, just one of those times that she happened to be downstairs. They told her, they said, ma'am, this woman here, she, she saved your life. She saved your family. And she just kind of looked over and I'm like, so what? You know, no big deal. And they just could not believe how she was. Oh my gosh. If, if that would have just, you know, been over just a little bit more, the combustion would have just set the, you know, it would have caused- Her house could have blown up. Yeah. And I live- I have a friend area. whose house literally blew up from a leaky gas pipe. Yeah. Well, I live in a neighborhood where there was an explosion many yeah. years ago. Yeah. And so, I mean, uh, and but Andrew was like, oh my gosh, you you saved our baby. You know, because the, the gas meter was right below James's room. But she didn't care. She could have cared less. Wow. Oh, so, it was things like that were not, were not important to her at all. How, yeah. how, was she involved with her son? No. 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 No, never. Never. I, mean, I never witnessed her pick him up, um, play with him, nothing like that. It was always Andrew. Um, there were a couple of occasions when I would go into the master bedroom, and if they were, if her and Andrew were in there with her and Am- if Amber and Andrew and the baby were in that bedroom, and they had James on the bed. If he would start to like crawl towards her, yeah, he would just direct him back towards Andrew, and I would just kind of just wonder in my mind, what, you know, what is she doing? She would show that child no attention, none. Was he connected to his mom at all? I don't think so. No. no. And the reason why I think that he wasn't or yeah. he is is because after she was arrested, yeah, I was there every single day and not one time did that baby ever say mama 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 never once never once never very ever, ever cried. obviously never. very close to dad oh yeah when daddy would leave he would start to pucker up and you know the tears would start and we would have to me and the babysitter would have to say daddy be back in just a little while and we were able to you know calm him down or whatever but it, no, never once said mommy. Never, ever. So. So there's been a lot of um, speculation about her, like, a lot of people have said that she gets up really late and that there are allegations of, like, drug use in her house. Mm-hmm. Um what can you say to that? Um, the only thing I can say to that is I never witnessed any type of drug use, per se. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing that I can honestly say is, yes, she did sleep a lot during the day. Um, and she slept. I mean, we were not, the babysitter and I were not told that we had to be quiet. I mean... I would run the sweeper, I would run the, the floor cleaner or whatever it was. Um, nothing would wake her up. So obviously she was up late, late at night. Um, and there was times that when I would leave between like maybe six o'clock, seven o'clock in the evening, she still wasn't up. So I don't, I have no idea what time she got up in what? the evening. Did she le- ever leave the house or was she like just up in her bedroom all the time? She stayed in her bedroom all the time. 
occasionally it, there was one time that I did see her leave and that was when um, it was her and Andrew and James were going to pick Leah up to go to the zoo. Mm -hmm. And so they were rushing around getting ready and that was one of the times that I saw her kind of like go have, excuse me, have one of her moments as I called them. And it was because the car seat was not in the right car. And you thought it was the end of the world. I mean, she just threw such a fit. And it's like everybody just started rushing around. You know, we had to serve, you know, pr you know, Princess Amber. And that's what it was like. So Andrew's like, you know, one of us was holding the baby. And, you know, I've got a set of car keys. He's got a set of car keys. We're switching the cars around so we get the right car seat and the right car. And I'm like, Lord have mercy. This is, this is crazy. Yeah. You know. She, who is she? She's not the Queen of England, you know. So she was mad about a car seat, and what was she screaming, yelling, like? Yeah, we're, we're going to be late. We're going to be late. Well, maybe you should have thought about this. Maybe you should have got up maybe 45 minutes earlier to get ready. It's not Andrew's fault that you're late. It's your own fault that you're late because you didn't get up in enough time. And Andrew got the baby ready. He got himself ready. You know, we probably helped her pick out, you know, get her clothes ready too. And because Andrew was always responsible for getting the baby ready, the diaper bag ready, all that stuff. She was never responsible for that. What? So she's like never taking care of the kid. She's no. up all night. She's sleeping all day. Does she do yeah. anything in the house? Does she have any responsibilities at all? No. Just to, her, her responsibilities in the house were... If I did not put something just in the right particular spot that she wanted, I mean, she would just nitpick me. And then when it got to be that point, I was like, look, you know, I'm older and I have children that are a little bit older than you and I really don't have to take this. Yeah. So if this is how you're going to treat me, we can sever this relationship right now. And... She's like, no, no, I don't want to do that, you know, because you do things how, exactly how I like them and, you know, try to smooth that over. But she would. She would, nit, she would nitpick me to death, but then turn around and tell me how, you know, wonderful of a job I did. So it was just like, you never know what, you, what to expect. You never, when you walked in that door, you, it was just like you were walking into the unknown. And you, when you found the job, had no idea who she was, right? I had no idea. Okay. I had no idea. And then when I found out, I mean, I even told the both of them, I said, look, I had no idea that you guys were celebrity status, but it doesn't change my opinion of you guys. I'm not going to treat you any differently. You know, just because you're on TV doesn't change, you know, who you are. You put your pants on the same way I do every morning, one leg at a time. And, you know, that's just how it was. So, and, but she still just was, felt like she was above everybody. You know, that she could just say anything that she wanted to, do anything that she wanted to, and it was okay. Yeah, that's a, so I've spoken to a lot of people over the past several months that know her personally, and mm -hmm. almost everyone I've talked to does not believe that this has anything to do with mental illness. What do you say to her outbursts? Like, what what is the outbur What are these outbursts like? Did you witness these outbursts? Like, did you hear these arguments? Did oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I have a perfect example. Is there was one day they were upstairs and they were her and Andrew were upstairs and they were just she was just just giving him a what for? I mean, just really reaming his rear, just chewing his butt over. I don't I have no idea over what. Mm -hmm. So. I, wa I walked up to the top of the stairs, right to the entrance of their bedroom, because I got tired of listening to her, her yell at him. Because yeah. Because Andrew is such a nice guy. He really is. And so she kind of opened up the door, and he was, like, standing in the entrance of his office, which is, like, right around the corner. Mm -hmm. And he was kind of, like, peeking around the corner to see if she was in a better mood or maybe she had lost her attitude. And she just looked at me, and she's like, Sometimes he just irritates me. And at that point in time, I knew she was able to control her temper. 
Yeah. So she knew how to control her temper and keep it under control. She, it's not a mental illness. You know, we all can control what we do and what we say. You know, she has a little baby in the house and that baby could hear her scream, you know? So I'm not buying the mental illness stuff. I'm sorry, I'm not. Was, were, would she scream like daily at him? Yeah. Like daily? I mean, yeah, every single day. That poor guy walked on eggshells. And I just told him, I said, look, I have two boys. Whoa. So, you know, if their wives treated, you know, treated them like she treats you, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I would have to intervene. And at one point in time, I told him, if you ever need some place to go, here's my address. And, you know, you can bring the baby and come stay at our house because, you know, you shouldn't have to, you should not have to live like this. You know, you're too good of a guy. Yeah. So you were obviously like afraid for him and yeah. identifying that he was in an abusive relationship. Right. Exactly. I mean, did you witness any physical abuse? Um, not really. I mean, just, she would like pick something off, off the bed and like, just like throw it at him. Like it maybe like a flip flop or a shoe and she would just toss it at him. Or if he was walking out of the bedroom, pick up one of the baby's toys and like just throw it at him mm -hmm. as he was walking out of the room. But I didn't witness any like weapons or anything like that. So except for the day after the incident, um, I mean, okay, we can go there. Um, so leading up to this, you've witnessed a lot of vi like verbal abuse and like just entitlement it sounds like of she's the queen and everyone else is her minions right like right. I I'm imagining her like the um off with their heads from Alice in Wonderland like the queen of <laughs> the queen of hearts yeah. um this is like what I have in my mind now when I'm thinking of Amber and so she's entitled and everyone is beneath her and she sleeps all day doing something to keep her up all night. Drugs of some sort, though you didn't see anything, but there was some stenches in the house, right? Some smelly... Yeah. Andrew had mentioned that she smoked pot all the time in the closet. Did you see that or smell that? Um, you asked me, a, if you're, you're going to ask me a direct question, I'm going to give you a direct answer. Okay. When I went in there to hang up her clothes, there was definitely some puff, puff passing going on in there. <laughs> okay. okay. So she's definitely smoking pot in the house. Okay. Somebody was smoking pot in that, in that closet. Okay. And it wasn't me. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So obviously one of the big questions a lot of people have is that, with the audio recordings that have been leaked, a lot of people are saying, well, he baited her and he was putting her and provoking her. And you're saying that literally a car seat could trigger her. Like, yeah. right? Yeah. Like it didn't, did it not, did he, did you find him provoking her or um, triggering her or was it more just like anything triggered her? Anything would trigger her. I mean, when the arguments would go on upstairs, he would come downstairs to make sure that me and the babysitter were okay. And there were times I was, I would be like, Andrew, you know, did, did I do something wrong? Did I make her mad? Did, you know, Brianna make her mad? Yeah. Some, and he always said, no, she's just having one of her days. It's my fault. And I said, okay, is there anything that I can do to make your day better? Mm -hmm. He said, no. It's nothing to do, and I, I, I believed him. It was just, she was just, that's how she was. She had to pick on somebody, and he was, he was the whipping dog, sure. if you will. He was the doormat. Yeah. In my conversations with him, and I haven't spoken with him in quite some time, but um, I found him to be very, if anything, sort of naive. Um, very. Like, um, sees the good in everyone kind of person, and... Um, 
maybe a little bit sheltered because of the life that he had with his family. Yes. Um, and not exposed to a lot of the stuff and was more like thrown into a world where he was just like, holy crap, who are these people? Like that was honest to God, the impression I got of him, like just so overwhelmed and so out of his element and so naive. Right. Now, I did. I have had the opportunity to, to meet his mother, mm-hmm. sister, and I can tell you that you are you are dead on that's you're you're absolutely right i mean some of the stories that his mother shared with me Mm -hmm. were hilarious i mean he's that's that's really the way he is i mean he is just just like sometimes i'm like andrew okay he tries to see the good in everyone yeah and even after it happened he was like gosh i hope she gets help and i'm like andrew yeah i i'm i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to make you sit in time out dude yeah, Seriously. I know. Okay. I know. He never he came after you with a machete. Right. Yeah. And she could have hurt the baby. And that's when he was like, you could tell that the wheels were turning in his head. And he said, you're absolutely right. And it, it took him a, a while to realize that, you know, take that all in because it happened so fast. Yeah. So, but yeah, now it's, it's hit home and. There, I was worried at first that he may, you know, try to take her back. Yeah. But there's no going back. No now. going back. Yeah. That's from our, I haven't, again, I haven't spoken to him in quite some time, but from everything I understood, it mm-hmm. was done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's get into the nitty gritty here. So in the months leading up, you're seeing a woman that's clearly r- hostile, psychotic, yeah, abusive, and what happens you weren't there the day that it happened but you said that you had received a message yes i received a text message and it was like a little before midnight and it said um amber's gotten physical um with me and james with me and i've been i'm with james and i don't know what to do and I didn't have my phone with me right at the time because it was the 4th of July. Yeah. And at at family's, a family member's house. And once I got to my phone, I was like, oh my gosh, Andrew, I'm sorry. I just got your message. If you need to come to my house, you know, come on over. Yeah. And by this time, this is, this had been when the police had already been called and, you know, all that had taken place. So the very next morning, I mean, I was up there bright and early. You know, because he was so distraught. And, of course, you know, he told, told me everything that happened. And I'm like, okay, well, we got to put every, we got to think, we got to put things in perspective and we got to start, you know, we need to get a lawyer. Yeah. You know, we got to protect this, this baby, so on and so forth. And, you know, kind of make, make a plan, if you will. Yeah. Um, because he was kind of at a loss of, as, what do I do? Dazed, dazed. Yeah, he was distraught. I mean, probably traumatized. She, yeah, I mean, even though she was a monster, you can't help who you love. Yeah, you know, you really can't. And I think he was just like, just in disbelief that she had taken it this far. You know. So what was this? What was the what was the house like that morning? It was very somber. I mean, you could tell he was, he was very sad. Um, He was also very scared. You know, he stayed so close to that baby. He would not put that baby down. And I kept saying, Andrew, let me have James go take a nap. He's like, no, I, I, I can't. I, no, I can't. I'm like, look, you need to, you know, you need to get something to eat. I'm, he wouldn't, he didn't want anything to eat. So finally, after a couple of hours, I persuaded him to get something to eat. I started calling, you know, some lawyers. We got a hold of a lawyer, and we made some appointments. And it was at that point in time that he finally opened up, and I said, look, you know, let's talk about this. Yeah. Let's talk about what happened. And he said, okay. And he proceeded to tell me the entire story of, you know, what happened, how she came at him with the machete when he was in the office. I saw the marks on the door. And so you saw the marks on the door? Yeah. Like, were there slash marks on the office door? Yeah. Were they? And the, 
Were they there previously? No. Because I, that was that was one of the stories that um, she was spinning very early on, that those were scratches from a dog. No, I'm going to call Liar Liar Pants on Fire on that one. Okay. Because I painted that entire upstairs hallway okay. and doors. Okay. Yeah. So that was fresh paint up there. Okay. How long were the marks? Oh, at least like uh, the size of a ruler, like 12 inches. How, was yeah. there a lot of them? At least four. I, I mean, they were gash marks, you know, like a machete. Like, you know, you were, they, machete. Were, the, were they deep into the door? Yeah. Oh, God. I, I mean, deep enough to where I, with one of the swings, she broke the doorknob. The doorknob was broke. So the doorknob was off the door. Not all the way off the door. It was kind of like dangling. She had, you know, hit it so hard that it was dangling down. So. So she could I mean, have theoretically broken through that door. Yeah. If she wanted to, yeah, she could have easily done that. So. And no time. I mean, if she would have just, you know, if the machete would have slipped out of her hand. Yeah. Yeah. And the door would have been opened. No, I mean, there are so many, there's so many ifs to this. Yeah. I don't think that people realize when that's a deadly weapon. Oh, yeah. 100%. And she just wants to play it off that it was like nothing. You know, you know, her first story was, oh, I hit him with a shoe and he wants to say it's a machete. No, she came after him with a machete while he had the baby in his arms. You know, let's tell the truth for once, Amber. You know, be a woman and stand up and tell the truth. Wow. Okay, really. It's time to put on your big girl pants and tell the truth. So, you see the marks on the door. You're trying to help Andrew get an attorney. You are there by his side through the very hardest of days, which was amazing because obviously he's doesn't have a lot of support there. Right. How did you end up bailing her out? Like, how did that happen? Well, her mother shows up, okay? And her mother is very, can be very intimidating. Very intimidating. And she's- Well, where do you think Amber learned it, right? <laughs> yeah. The apple doesn't fall very far. Right. <laughs> yeah. So she's like, you're going to bail her out of jail. And I'm like, uh, I'm going to do what? Yeah. You're going to bail her out of jail. So let's go. Let's, let's go. You know, come on, let's go. You know, she, you're, she's your employer. So you're going to go bail her out of jail. And I'm just like, you know, and my husband was with me that day and I kind of looked at him and I was like, what do I do? And he's like, I guess you're going to go bail her out of jail. And I just felt like there was no. Like, did no, they threaten you if you didn't bail her out? I felt that way. I felt like if I didn't go bail her out of jail, that, you know, I would no longer have a job. And at the time I needed one. And. Because your husband wasn't working. At the right. Time. Yeah. At the time. And, you know, she did say, you know, she is your employer. So. You know, you do, you need to bail her out of jail. So. Oh my God. So basically like, if you don't do this, she's your employer. You're not yeah. going to work for us anymore. Yeah. And then the other part of me was like, okay, if I want to stay around. Yeah. Help Andrew and the baby. That's maybe that's the only way that I, I can still be around to make sure that they're okay. So. I guess maybe that's how I justified it in my mind. Like if you helped her, you'd still be able to be at the house and you'd still be able to see James and make sure that James was okay. Exactly. And that, yeah, exactly. exactly. Sure. And there's going to be some people out there that says, well, I don't, I don't get that. I don't understand that. Well, they weren't there at the time. They well, yeah, there. it sounds like you I felt like that her mother's like, yeah, you know, in that kind of a situation. And I mean, she just popped down the couch. She was not leaving until I bailed her daughter out of jail. She wasn't going anywhere. And Amber kept calling on the phone nonstop. 
and I could hear her screaming on the phone. Tell her to bail me out of jail. She better bail me out of jail right now. You tell her to bail me out of jail right now. I'm like, oh, good God. You know? So I knew I had no other choice but to bail her out of jail. Why didn't Tanya bail her out? Did she say? Well, she didn't have the money. She didn't have the money? No. Okay, and there's people in chat, and they want to know, did you sign an NDA? A what? A non-disclosure agreement to work at her house? No. Okay, because people are worried that you're, like, violating an NDA, but I know you didn't have one. I just wanted to, like, no. okay. No, I um, anything. No, I can tell it all. What would the purpose for her to have these weapons be? Did you ever find that out? I, I have no clue. I really don't. I have no idea why she felt the need to have weapons in the house for, I don't know, for protection, maybe for protection from herself. I don't know. No did she have any like you said you didn't see did there was there any drugs in the house um i there was a basket in one of the um in the attic yeah like like marijuana stuff in it but that's that's about it yeah okay yeah okay we will get down to this at some point. We are going to figure out why she had these weapons. But anyways. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you finally go down and you bail her out. Does she thank you? No. She didn't thank you? No. Did she no. say anything? No. I didn't see her that day. I Because after her mom and I, we went down there. And then we drove back to... It, her house, which was, that's where Andrew and the baby were, you know, she called, we were expecting it to be four or five or six hours for her to be released. Yeah. And, um, so, but it wasn't, I mean, it, it happened pretty quickly, very quickly. A lot, I mean, it's like unbelievably quickly. So her mom had to go, you know, she dropped me off and then she immediately went straight back down to pick her up. And, um, so they didn't come back by the house or anything like that. Um, they did, I think they called Andrew to make arrangements for um, Amber to come by on, I think this, they, she was billed out on Saturday, I think it was. All my days run together. So yeah, long. yep, she went on a Thursday night and then got out Saturday afternoon. Yeah. Yep. So the plans were she was going to come by on Sunday with her mom at four o'clock to go pick up some clothing and she was supposed to pick up the Land Rover or something. And, um, and Andrew was going to, he was supposed to leave with the baby and my, me and my niece were there. Okay. So they show up and of course they're, they're trying to distract me. One of them's downstairs, one of them's upstairs, no tongue. I don't know if they were recording me. I, like I said, I don't care. I was just doing what I was supposed to, you know. She told me to make sure all of her clothes were hung up in her closet. Jesus, that took me like three hours to do. Yeah, I heard were... that she would just buy clothes and, like, not wear them, not return them. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, spending was... thousands of dollars on clothes because she never would wear the same thing while she filmed, but yet literally never wore them. And they would yeah. just sit in a pile with, like, tags on them? Yeah. Okay. So my niece and I spent three hours hanging up these clothes. I did 27 loads of laundry. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, it was crazy. I, I, I had to bring laundry home to do it. So, so it. what happens when she's there? Like. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Finish? Okay. Hang on to your seats. You guys spill so, some tea, girl? Yeah, we're going to spill some major tea. All right. I mean, hang on to your boats. All right. Bring it. Right. So we're upstairs in the master bathroom. And inside the master bathroom is the master closet. Yeah. It's Andrew's closet. And that is where the machete was. In the closet. In the closet. Okay. In, in, and so... She picked it up and she goes, look, that's where the machete is. And it's got white paint on it. And I just looked at her like, 
Okay. Well, of course it's got white paint on it. You tried to chop down the door. Did I you say that or no? No, I didn't say that to her. I just looked at her. I was like, yeah. So she acknowledges that there's one in the house. Yeah. To and you. Yeah, and she acknowledges that it has white paint. White on paint it. on it. And you just told us before that there's chunks of, like, slash marks and, like, the door was beat up by it. Yeah. And she's saying to you, look, there it is, and it has white paint on it. Right. And exactly. she has said on social media that this doesn't exist. Yeah. Well, I'm here to tell you that it does. I saw it firsthand. It's not hearsay. It is true. I am not. I'm, I wouldn't lie about something like that. So what? So, when after she said that, what did she say? She, she looked at me and she said, Rhonda, I need you to do me a favor. I thought, oh boy, here we go. She said, I need you to tell Andrew that I love him and that I need him to lie. And he needs to change his story because if he doesn't, I am going to go to prison for six years. No. Yeah. She said it twice, not once. But twice. She and, wanted you to tell Andrew to lie to the police that this didn't happen? Yes. And my niece was standing right there. What did you say? I just looked there and I said, okay, I'll let him know. I mean... That's obstruction. She's asking you to commit a crime. I know. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give up my my freedom to just so for her. Who? I mean, that's when I just you know no. I I just said okay, just to pacify her and to get her out of my way. I just wanted to be just for her to leave. Unbelievable. And she not she said it twice, not once, but twice. So have Andrew lie. No, no, no. Let's start at the beginning. Tell Andrew that I love him, and she said it so dramatically. It was like she was on me. She could have won an Oscar for. Yeah, I can. Andrew I can totally I hear her saying it too. Well, Andrew, that I love him, but he needs to lie because. If not, I'm going to go to prison for six years. Well, and I, of course, the the part of me that wanted to say so bad, well, you should have thought about that before you came after him with a machete and the baby in his arms. Right. But I'm not going to say anything to her. Did you, I, did you yeah. tell Andrew that or? Oh yeah, I told him right when he got back and he was like, what? He was in disbelief. And he's like, we got to call the lawyer right now. I said, yeah, we need to call the lawyer right now. So you told the police and the prosecutors and all that? Yeah, I told everybody. Okay. I told the prosecutor. They've taken, they've taken my statement. I told the detective she, my statement. Um, yeah, I, I told the lawyer. I mean, yeah, I have not kept this secret. So you, until recently, have been really kind of, I mean... People connected know of your existence, but you have been relatively quiet. Like, you filed a petition in court last week to have the bond money returned to you because you haven't been paid back, right? Right. And that's not that's not really that's not why that's not where where it started. I heard the rumors that she was going to get house arrest, and I've been I've gotten. I, a new job, so I haven't had much time to see Andrew or the baby. Mm-hmm. Wind of the fact that she was just going to get rest, and I talked to Andrew, and I was like, "Are you kidding me?" And he's like, "No." And I was like, "You know, this is crazy." And I said, "I want to start pull. I want to contact every domestic violence group out there. I don't care if it's women or men, and we need to band together for, and you know, get something going on this because it's not right." This was happening to a woman. Don't tell that this it wouldn't be going this way. It would be going just the opposite way. Yeah. It would be going the opposite way. 
I don't care if he's six seven, six nine, seven foot tall. It doesn't make a difference, you know. And if I hear one more time that she's five two, blah blah blah, it doesn't matter, you know. She's already been convicted of this once before, you know. She thinks she can get away with anything and everything. It's got to stop. So, wow. So you, um, obviously the, so Starcasm reported that you requested that the money be back. You are saying yes. this, you want the money back. You're saying like somebody needs to speak up for Andrew and be his voice because if this were a man or if this were a man, this would be like attempted murder. This would be way bigger than house arrest. Now I've heard con conflicting stories um, that there hasn't even been an offer. Okay, you work for her from May to July. Now, have you, you haven't worked for them. You left after some time in August? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, there's some, um, the last time I'd heard, now, obviously with the, the plea deals, we don't really know a whole lot of what's going on and um, what we speculate. Like I said, I don't really know what's going to happen here, but... Um, do you get the sense that she is going to take this to trial or would she actually like, do you, do you think she would take a plea? Um, I can't see her taking this to trial. I really can't. I mean, if she does, I mean, in, in Marion County, I mean, I don't know. I just think that perception of even though she's a celebrity yeah I mean some I, I think it could go either way some I, I, try, I try to stay out of the media as much as possible yeah because you know they try to paint her as being this great person and it just makes me angry yeah I'm and, I'm here to tell you like a lot of people have said to me that I'm being really biased about this, but I have talked to so many people, Rhonda, that know her, and every mm -hmm. single person has the exact same story. Like, they literally say the same things that you're telling me. Like, that nothing sets her off, that everything makes her mad, that she is evil and vindictive to, like, Andrew, that Andrew was, like, always taking care of the baby, that she was always sleeping, like, um that there's like all these speculations about drugs, but nobody can say for sure. Like there's so much going on here that it's like, I don't know why everyone wants to protect her. I don't, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, MTV wants to protect her. You're literally saying that you only bailed her out because you felt like you would lose your job. But then if you didn't bail her out, you thought you might lose your access to James, which sure. I can totally understand. Um, and now you're going to, Oh, there's something I've got to tell you this oh. before. I've... Okay. We had his, his haircut. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh yeah. She got mad about that. No, she didn't. She, well, at first, because this was like during one of this, her CPS visits. Mm -hmm. Okay. She didn't even notice. She didn't notice that he has haircut. No, because when we sent him for a CPS visit, we, we informed the CPS lady that picked him up. We told her, look, we just had his, he just had his first haircut. Yeah. So can you give us a call on your way back? Just be, you know, to, to kind of give us heads up. We're afraid that she's going to like kind of go crazy. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, she'll let us know. And I said, well, and I said this, I said, maybe she won't notice. And the lady said, Oh, she'll notice. Everyone, every mother should notice the baby's first haircut. Yeah. She did not notice the first haircut. And then the woman, the CPS woman said, well, you know, she was really upset and she was really emotional, blah, blah, blah. No, she just didn't notice James' first haircut until after the fact. I don't know when she finally noticed. Well, that. he posted some photos of him online. Uh -huh. getting the haircut and then she was like outraged 
Yeah, well, that was, that was after the... I mean, she saw him the day that he got his haircut, his first haircut. That day. And she didn't notice. So would you say, like, her, like, the way that she talks about him is, like, all for, like... Is that it's, all for, it's all for show? Yeah. Just like, okay, let me give you an example. I'm trying to explain this to Andrew, and or anybody that'll listen to me, is that... Okay, just like with Leah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh wait, that's the other thing. How often does she see Leah? From the time I was there, I I heard of one time. Once. That, once they were supposed to go to the zoo, but the whole time that I was there, I didn't see her, and I was there a lot on the weekends. I mean, I you didn't ask my husband. I was he because he complained that I was never home. I was there all the time. All the time. Yeah. Because she always needed something else done. She needed this done. She needed, you know, whatever it was. Yeah. So, I just got a, a message. Somebody said, please change your number. I don't know what it was. I don't know if someone's got my phone number or whatever, but I don't care what it says. Uh, it was a text message. Oh, probably because it, when you called, it, maybe it flashed on my screen. Yeah, that's fine. So, if that's... What I, I don't care who calls me. I don't care who has negative things to say about me. You know what? If they don't like it, they'll get over it. Okay? Like, if you're doing this to stand up for... I'm doing this to stand up for anybody that has gone through domestic violence. Okay. Okay? And also for Andrew. Okay? Right. Okay? But for those people out there that had that have had to go through domestic violence, you know at the hands of someone else and and they got the short end of the stick you know i feel sorry for them you know they've been intimidated they've been you know beaten or, or whatever their situation is yeah and so wasn't there to stand up for them i feel sorry for them you know yeah i'm on the courts for not protecting them shame on for shame on law enforcement for not protecting them yeah you know if they didn't have family or whatever it was but no one should have to go through that. I don't care if it's a man or a woman, you know? Yeah. We all should be treated, you know, as human beings. We all have feelings. We all have rights, you know? And I'm not doing this because she's famous. To me, she's no one, you know? She's just the, just somebody, just another girl, another 29-year-old girl, you know, who just thinks she has this entitlement or this... Right, because she's on MTV. Whoop de doo. Yeah. So, and if there's people down there that that think that I'm wrong or that says wants to say negative things about me, you know what? They were not there. They did not see the things that I saw. You know. So so be it. It's, I'm not gonna lose any sleep over it. I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just I'm just stating what happened. I'm stating the facts. I'm telling the truth, and if you could look at that little baby's face, yeah, and anybody that can be mean to him, oh my gosh, you know, I consider them to be a monster. I mean, he is just the sweetest thing in the world. Whenever he sees me, he just looks at me and he goes, eh, you know, and just makes yeah. this little. little so I, I've, I've heard from people connected that his affect has changed a lot mm -hmm. since. She was removed. And I actually figured it out. I tried to call you back when uh -huh. you called, and then your phone number appeared on the screen, and I apologize for that. Oh, that's okay. Okay. I didn't even think about it. I was just like, holy crap, what happened to the phone call? And then your number was there. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I've spoken to some people connected that have said that prior to all of this, he was very sort of like, always like on edge and very quiet because anything could set her off and he sort of got used to being very quiet because she would yell so much mm -hmm. um but i've to been told now he's like babbling and like people were actually kind of concerned that he might be delayed back then and now it's like not even a thought in their minds can you um, yeah i mean he's just i can't I'm trying to think when the last time I saw him. It's probably been about three weeks ago when I went up to see him. And because um, I just had a few hours after work. 
and he was just so excited to see me and he was just like you know run, like running towards me and then he would stop real quick and he's learned how to like shut the gates we bought baby gates and he's learned how to shut the gates and he is just he's just a different baby altogether he's not quiet anymore you know he's just walking around just jibber jabbering and you know just yeah going there's no more that you can't there's you cannot sense there's no more tension in the air it's like a happy house that is so awesome i mean it really is it's a happy house how do, how is andrew doing now um i think he's doing okay i think he's still he's still worried that you know it's 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 not going to come out that you know she may just get a slap on the wrist and, yeah you know and that's going to be it and that justice will not prevail yeah and i i can see where he's coming from yeah he just that her celebrity status is going to help her out in this situation yeah that's been um, my fear too yeah and i don't think that's right and from I know, like, in what other world, Rhonda, would a man do this and still have his job? I don't know. Think of it like this. Antonio Brown, of like, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, like, literally was cut from the Patriots, and nobody wants him because of an allegation that hasn't been proven, not saying it didn't happen, of rape. I mean, right. no conviction, no criminal case, nothing. And he lost his job and he's out of the league. And yet she has been arrested twice and she still has a job. Right. And she's been arrested twice. She's been convicted. Right. Once. Yes. Okay. What would you say to the people at Viacom and MTV that are like, allowing her to still have a job because everybody I've talked to has said this money and this power and the sense of entitlement has fueled this explosive behavior and has created this monster and that she feels invincible. I would say to them, what, what are you trying to say to your viewers? I mean, that it's okay to, to back domestic violence I mean, is, is that what you're there to support? Is domestic violence? I mean, does she have you that snowed that that you believe her? Are you trying to, 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 to get some, some kind of a spinoff? I think this is for party? ratings, for crying out loud. I mean, it has I mean, to be. You know, what about, you know, listen to Andrew's side of the story. I mean, I'm sorry, but ratings over a ch you're going to push a child to the wayside for for ratings yeah you know what's more important a human life or ratings i don't think you can put a price tag on a human's life no i really don't i don't and shame on you mtv shame on you right that's how i feel so you likely will be maybe called as a witness if you if this goes to trial almost definitely um i think that i'm like they they've told me like i'm like the number one witness so because of the things that she said to me you know and asked me to ask him to lie and so on and so forth so i, I you know i i'm not afraid to, to testify in court because what i'm telling is the truth i'm not going to commit perjury Right. What I'm saying is the truth. Plus, like I said, my niece was there. She's 18 years old or 19 years old. Yeah. She was, she was there when it happened. She was right there in the room with me. She heard everything she said, too. So that's not hearsay. So not that, you know. The, I mean, that, so did she ever take clothes that day? Did she leave with any clothes? <laughs> she carried like two small, not even like, not even a duffel size bag. She didn't take any, hardly any clothes with her. She, oh, she no. She all she was going to do is just go buy some more. That's all she did. Did she like 
Was she looking for stuff when she was there? No, she was just like looking around the house just to see, you know, if anything, if she could. I am. The one thing that she did do. Was she trying to tamper with things? Yes. She did. There was a a spot on the wall on the way out um, when you exit the bedroom, the master bedroom. Yeah. Like above the light plate. Yeah. So Put the light on. Yeah. And you could tell that this was old. And my niece even said this. But she, her and her mom, she looked up and she goes, what is that above the light plate? And her mom said, I don't know. And, and she walked towards it and she goes, oh my God, he's resorting to, to hitting or, or putting his fist through the walls. And I looked at her and I said, what in the world are you talking about? And my niece, like I said, who's like 19 years old, she goes, he didn't put his fist through the wall. She said, if anything, that's from, there's no way. She said, that looks like a dent from a long time ago because it was so small and insignificant. It wasn't a fist print. It wasn't anything like that. It looked like maybe something where a picture had been hung or someone had just like, you know, barely nicked the wall. It was not a fist mark or anything like that. So she's just going to stick to the story of she's in the public, didn't do anything. Andrew, here's the things that she has said about Andrew publicly. He's cheated on her. <laughs> He's, um, she's accusing him of being an addict or using drugs, um, driving drunk, um, stealing money and using her for fame and pre impregnating her on purpose. How do you impregnate somebody on purpose? I don't know. And he uses drugs? No. You know what? She needs, she needs to be careful. Really careful. Yeah. Yeah. I've Well, I've heard from a lot of people. I can't confirm, but there's been a lot of discussion about a lot of street narcotics yeah. in her home and mm -hmm. use of them. Yeah. Yeah. And... You know, it's, it, I'd have to really sit back and think really hard because that day that, the day after that it happened on the 5th of July, mm -hmm. I know that when I arrived there, um, I think Andrew told me maybe we should go through her purse. Oh, really? Yeah. And I said, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe we should think about that. And I don't know if I really want to talk about that at this juncture, but okay. maybe we're going to revisit that. So Dropping she, nuggets for the future. There might have been some stuff in that purse, you guys. Yeah, that's right. And I, like I said, I am not going to commit perjury at all. I will not lie about it. So if there were things in that purse, you would tell the police? Absolutely. Fair enough. I have a, I have a cousin that's a U.S. Marshal. Do you think I'm going to lie to them? Least. No. No. No, not at all. Okay. This answers so many questions. I. So you want your money back, obviously. Yeah, I earned it. Yeah. Um, you wrote a letter to the court about the money was money that was due and hardship, but a lot of this is just coming down to principle and just wanting well, what's right is right isn't what's, what's right wrong. right yeah so to sum all of this up andrew is not provoking her he had no time to cheat he was not triggering her he was actually just walking on eggshells doing his best to raise a child in an, a relationship where he was clearly in over his head and yeah andrew andrew was andrew was one of those guys that you would want to take home to your mom yeah if you if you had a daughter that's the kind of guy that you want your daughter to bring home he wow. was kind he was gentle he was sweet he was considerate he was understanding he didn't raise his voice. He took care of the baby. He waited on her hand and foot. You know, he took all of the bullshit, I'm sorry, all of the crap that she was willing to dish out and then some. 
And at the end of the day, she's the one that, that comes out smelling like a rose. And she wants to accuse him of cheating. That man, he, he never had time to cheat. I mean, the only thing he did was take care of the baby. You know, go to the grocery store. I mean, if he bought her one more bouquet of flowers, I think I was going to throw up. I know. I heard that he did that a lot because he was always afraid Almost of like every other day. And I'm like, Andrew, you got to stop with the flowers. Doing anything to not make her mad. Yeah, trying to please her. And then, because I told him, I said, you buy her one more bouquet of flowers. I'm not, because she didn't take care of them. She just let them die and sit there. She didn't appreciate it. And that's what he did the night of all this happening. That was in the affidavit. Yeah, yeah I know. And I'm just like, and there would be like three or four vases in a room. I'm like, I am, I'm, I'm just going to throw the vases away because she doesn't even appreciate that. You know, so I would just take the flowers and the vases and throw them in the trash. Wow. Because she didn't care. She didn't care. You know, the little cards that he would write on there, she would just throw them away. Just throw them away. Nothing was sentimental. But the things that, you know, occasionally that she would give to him, mm -hmm. which was not very often. Yeah. That she would give to him that would be from James. Yeah. You know, he would carry it. And it would just be whatever it was. Yeah. Just any little any little little crumb. Yeah. Just any crumb of something that would be sentimental. He would cling to it. You know? And it was sad. It was so sad. So, so he was taking yeah. scraps and she was getting she was like she was eating high off the hog. Yeah. So. Well, Andrew is so lucky to have someone like you in his life, and I hope that you continue to support him. And um, oh, I will. I'm going to support him to the end. I, I prom. I made a promise to his mother when she was here. Good. And I he told needs, her that he needs people like that in his life. Yeah, I yeah. told her. I said I will see him through this. And You're I like the mom he doesn't have there right now. Yeah, yeah. He calls me his Indiana mom. Yeah. <laughs> So I told her I would, I'll make sure that he gets through this. So, um, yeah. so before we go, Brittany Smith said that she's sending you love from Canada and God bless you, Rhonda. Thank you, Brittany. Um, and then one, and then Southern Cat Lady said that your number got blasted, which I have apologized for. And I hope <laughs> you don't get, I hope I'm going to do my best when this re-uploads to edit that out. I cannot believe I put that on there. I'm so sorry. It was so confusing when it hung up and I was like, and then your number was there. And then I was trying to call you back, not even thinking, because I'm just like trying to get you back on the phone. And I'm like, oh my God. Hopefully I, hopefully I don't have a lot of haters on there. Maybe it'll just be love. Who knows? Who knows? Eventually it will die down. If you yeah. want to change your number. I am so sorry. Yeah, don't worry about it. You know what? If I start getting a lot of haters, you know what? There's that block feature. There is a block feature. <laughs> you know, Rhonda, if nothing I've learned is that you're a tough cookie. And um, yeah. you yeah. Um, have done a good deed. And I hope you get that money back. Um, is there anything else that you want people to know before we go? Uh, yeah. Don't always, don't judge, judge a book by its cover. Okay, just because she's got that smile on her face and, you know, she's just, oh, I don't, I don't know what I can say without my lawyer. You know, what can I say? No. Deep, look deeper into those eyes and you'll see the evil. Oh, girl. Look deep in those eyes and you'll see the evil. You'll see the devil dancing in those eyes. And this is not, this is just pure abuse, not mental pure illness. Pure abuse, yes. It's not... It is just, that's all it is, is it's abuse. Okay. And it should not be tolerated. It doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. It needs to stop. Somebody needs to bring awareness to it. Absolutely. That we all need to band together. We do. And we're going to keep featuring the story. And, you know, if you remember more, let me know. Um, obviously, I wanted to be respectful of you, your time. You were very brave to come on here tonight. I cannot thank you enough for reaching out to me and sharing this. Um, I also want to confirm with the audience that I do know for certain that she worked with this family. So it's not like she reached out to me and it was like a stranger telling me this stuff. I have confirmation. So um, all the sources connected. Um, 
Thank you so much for your time tonight. You guys, please remember and keep in mind that this is all alleged according to Rhonda, um, but we hope that if she does testify against Amber that, or at least something happens in this court case where that she does have to serve some prison time. Yeah. Nobody should have to go through what they did. Yeah, I agree. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining us. See you next time. Bye. Bye.